so the next thing we need to do is to we already have our Windows our vCenter actually server stood up now we need to put the ISO file that we downloaded earlier on it um, so you right click on the VM we go to edit settings we scroll down a little bit until we see the data store so we click on it what we're doing is we're changing out our Windows ISO file if you will for a which one are we doing actually so let's see here so um, let's see when we downloaded the files right we downloaded two we downloaded one was well one was this this is the ESXi host and this one is the V um, center server one this is for the V server so we're gonna select this one click OK and click Save so we're at our ESXi host now our I'm sorry, our VM right now, our vCenter actually. We already have vCenter server installed or actually loaded, the CD's loaded. So we're going to right click on it and we're going to go install or run programs for media. Okay, so first things first, we click. Um, I don't believe there are any prerequisites. I think, yeah, it might be prerequisites because this is a new build, it hasn't been on the internet yet. So just start, it has capability on the internet, but. Um, it says none, so let's uh, let's give it a shot. Install. Click on install. Oh yeah, there are some prerequisites. So I'll just download those from the internet and we'll continue. So we're going to continue with um, our installation. Okay, so click OK. Okay, we're going to click next. Okay, read all this information. Okay, click next. So in this one, we do select deployment type. So we're going to do the embedded deployment which is going to give us, um, we don't have to have three um, three VMs essentially. See here you have to have three VMs. You just get one VM. So we're going to do that. Simple. We're going to click uh, next. So the system name that uses the fully qualified domain name of the actual um, system. We're going to leave that uh, and push next. On the vCenter uh, single sign-on domain name, we're going to actually change it to um, meshtext.local. And our site name, we're going to change it to vCenter meshtext. Okay, and then we'll put a password in and click next. Okay, it looks like we have to change the single sign-on domain name. We'll just change it to meshtext and click next. So we'll actually change it back. We'll change it to vCenter.meshtext. Okay, and push next. Okay, perfect. So we already have a, an account called vCenter, so we're going to use um, specify a user account called vCenter. Make sure I'm a domain admin on vCenter. So we're going to put the vCenter credentials in and push next. Oh, looks like we ran into an error here, so we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change um, that vCenter to actually be a login as a service. So we'll hop over to the domain controller. We'll go to our server manager. We'll go to tools, then group policy management. So we're going to go open uh, domains, the domain group policy objects, and then right click on the default domain controllers policy and click edit. Okay, so once you have that, you go to policies, then Windows settings, then security settings, and then finally local policies, and then security options. Actually, uh, user right assignments. So you click on the login as a service, you click on uh, define these policy settings and then add the domain admins to this. Then uh, push apply and OK. Back to our vCenter, so let's click next again. We'll do a GP update. Click next again. So I'm going to do the same thing I did there, but I'll do it locally on the computer, the, the vCenter meaning the log on as a service. I'll do the same settings. Then click next. So to use the embedded database, click next. Leave all these ports um, default and push next. We're going to leave the destination directory default and click next. And we're going to uncheck the join VMware cons customer experience and click next. So take note of these um, settings here. So this is how you're actually going to log into your 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 uh, vCenter when it comes up. So the single sign-on domain name is vCenter.meshtex and the administrator 
uh, his username and so it'll be like administrator at um, vcenter.meshtext okay so let's uh, install our looks like our uh, vcenter is successfully completed let's do uh, let's launch the vcenter so here's what the single sign on you see this right here it says the account is administrator at vcenter.meshtext that's what you log in with and with the password that you put in so we're going to click on launch uh, vSphere client and click finish okay next thing to do once we have we're in the vCenter it's good to go next thing to do is to add the hosts you just right click on the vCenter here and go new data center just name it whatever you want to name it okay once your data center is up then we're going to right click and we're going to add a hosts. Remember our hosts, we have three of them. We have our vCenter and we have our three hosts. Okay, so we're going to click put that in there. Right? And then we're going to scroll down, we're going to click next. And we're going to put the username and password in. The root username and password. So we're going to try the IP address instead of the host name actually. And then uh, click on uh, yes to connect to the host. Okay, no virtual machines in there yet, actually. We're going to click on Next. And finally click Next. So we're going to disable the lockdown mode. Next. So it's going into that data center. And click Next. And finally finish. Okay. Okay, we just have to do this for the other three hosts, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so our three hosts have been attached to the vCenter, so I'd like to thank you for viewing this lecture on setting up vCenter. If you like this video and you want to see more, please jump on to my course, which is, I have two courses. One is at getajobnit.teachable.com, and the other course is on Udemy. It's Learn Backup and Restore with Commvault, Get a High Paying Job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications? Thank you very much.